I was 14 years old. My hands were shaking. My heart was beating so fast. As I remember, three to five boys aged 14 to 17 dragged me to the quiet side of the school. And I still remember the older boy came right in front of me. His finger pointed right in my face and say, why are you so LC on your face? LC is a shorter word for something else and translation, arrogant. And I didn't know what to respond. And before I can say anything, a slap came to my face. And with a warning, you better don't show your LC face here anymore. At 14 years old, I didn't even understand. Did I really have an LC face? What did I do wrong? Moving forward in 1993, one of the famous psychological researchers, Nalini Ambani, wanted to discover how long does it take to form a first impression. What she did was very interesting. She went to Stanford University and went to video record actual lecturers that are lecturing the moment the lecturers went into the room. So she went to video record these different lecturers and then she invited students who have never seen this lecturer before. Then they come into the room and she played a silent video to the students to see. The first group of students saw 30 seconds of silent video of the lecturer. So for example, right, 30 seconds and then they were given Evaluation form. Do you like this lecturer? Do you think the lecturer is competent? Will you read? Will you take another subject from this lecture? Tick, 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 tick. I say thank you. I bring in another group of students, and this time the researcher cut the video even shorter to around 20 seconds. Evaluation. And the third group was around five to six seconds. She wants to see whether first impression is there any difference between six seconds to 30 seconds. But remember, these were actual lecturers lecturing in Harvard. So at the end of one semester, students who sat in the class with the lecturer for the entire 14 weeks engaged, asked questions with the actual lecturers. The researcher also went into the room and gave these students who sat in the class with the lecturer the same review. And they analyzed, they clicked, do you like the lecturers? Do you think the answers would be the same? Students who watch a silent 30 seconds video clip compare with students who sat in the class ask questions, interact with the lecturer for 14 seconds, will they give the same review? What she found was there was strong correlation. It was shocking for all psychological researchers researching on body language. In the research, she concluded three main findings. Number one, it is fast and can be made in 30 seconds. First impression is fast and can be made in less than 30 seconds. Number two, it is mainly determined by person non-verbal gesture. It is mainly determined by person non-verbal gesture. Why? Because all those videos had no sound. Means just by looking at your body language, a person in their mind, they are deciding already whether you have a LC face. And number three, it is largely permanent and determine how people relate to you in the future, which means those students, even though they were sitting in the class interacting with the lecturer for an entire 14 weeks, they too formed their first impression in the first 30 seconds of seeing the lecturers. This research totally changed my life. Ever since then, I did more study on body language, on the power of influence, and I too have critically evolved. Since then, moving forward to now, I have coached, trained different, different companies all around different, different industry, Uh, coach different different CEOs and their personal coaching, appeared on radio, news, published a book in MPH two years ago. And I would say that it all based on this thing that I hold dear to me now. We can't change others' perception of us, but we can influence their perception. We can't change others' perception of us, like what Alex said just now, all of us have a choice. We can change and influence how they perceive us. 
So we start with our body language. Are you ready? So I'm going to share with you very quickly five strategies to influence someone in 30 seconds. Why 30 seconds? You already know someone's perception is formed in 30 seconds. So I'm going to share with you the strategy that I too personally have used and share with different, different companies. How do we influence another person's perception in 30 seconds? Are you ready? The first one is the easiest. First one is the easiest, which is what I call genuine smile. But you see the word there is called genuine smile. How many of you give fake smile to your lecturers? <laughs> right? Or fake smile to your family members. Huh? Chinese New Year, hi. <laughs> right? right? We give fake smile. The key is this. So do you think you can differentiate between a fake and genuine smile? Yes? No? Maybe? Let's see. A and B. Which is genuine? Which is fake? Look carefully. Look carefully. Okay. Who say A is genuine? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Who say B is genuine? Okay, majority of you choose B. Okay, let's, let's give you colour and Z. Let's give you colour and Z. Yeah? A and B. Who say A is genuine? Majority of you. And who say B is genuine? One, two. Okay, the person who chose for this, yes, you are right, B is genuine. And for this, most of you are right also, A is genuine. For the person who chose both wrong, right, it means one thing. It means that you've got a very good heart. When someone show you fake smile, for you it's still genuine, <laughs> right? But the rest of us, the rest of us, you choose correctly. Yeah? You can, all of us can differentiate between a fake and genuine smile. But how come? You study body language, you watch lie to me, right? How come we can differentiate between fake and genuine? You see, since we are young, we are always exposed to face. Imagine since you are infant, right? The first thing that we look is a person's face, right? So you don't have to study psychology to know how to differentiate between a fake and genuine. But my challenge to you is this. If we can differentiate another person's fake smile, don't you think others can differentiate our fake smile too? Definitely. So now I want to teach you how to fake a genuine smile. <laughs> because psychologists found that if you can constitute, if you can display these three features in your face, another person will think is genuine. Okay, are you ready? The first one, what is it? The eyes, yes. What about the eyes? Watery, put eye more. No, yes, you're right. Squinting eyes. It's like you're focusing smaller a bit, right? You're squinting. You call it squinting. You're clo don't close your eyes, but you're focusing, right? Number two, the cheekbone. Yes, you're right. The cheekbone is higher. We say the cheekbone must be so high you can put water here. Huh? And the third one, the third one, sorry, the lips. Yes, the lips is wider. You can see the lips is wider. Huh? So what happens is this, if when you laugh, actually when a person laughs, automatically these three features are shown, right? Nobody laughs with their eyes open, <laughs> right? The eyes automatically go smaller, your cheekbone goes up and your lips go wide. But somehow when you give a fake smile, you forget that. So remember, the next time you want to influence someone important in your life, remember to show these three features because all it takes is 30 seconds and it's super easy. Eyes smaller, cheekbone higher, lips wider. And there's so many research that associate lips with trust. They found that people with your lips are more downwards, as seem at least trustworthy. Right? They show this computer-generated face to 100,000 respondents, and a lot of them rated, as your, as your lips go wider, people rated you as more trustworthy. Suddenly, I can see everybody smiling. Huh? Okay, so yes, smile more. Number two is eye contact. Right? So eye contact is the second most powerful thing to influence someone in 30 seconds. How is your eye contact? Are you okay with eye contact? Are you comfortable with eye contact? What do you think? Yes? Yes? No? No? Some of you, yes? Those who say yes, great. I've been doing this training and I went to different, different companies and I found this out, right? Asians in general, we are not so comfortable with eye contact. Why? Because shy, because it's an upbringing. You think about it, right? When you were young, right? And your parents scold you, right? Your parents scold you. What do you do? You look down. You don't dare to, you look up one more slap again, right? How do you look at me, right? So your teachers, your parents scold you, you look down and your, your parents scold you. Different from the Western culture, right? Think about the Western culture, the Americans there, it's like, look at me when I'm talking to you. Right? Total different culture. But, and yet, eye contact is so, so powerful, right? There are so many research that shows that when you have eye contact with a person, right? You connect with a person. The person trusts you more, the person likes you more. Whether is it a personal one-to-one, -one, whether is it to a talk, or whether is it a presentation, right? I'm going to give you three quick strategies when it comes to eye contact, a very quick one, very simple. Number one, we never ever stare, 
OK, we don't stare. And number two, number two, you don't move your eyebrow. OK, when you want to have good eye contact, you don't move your eyebrow. The purpose of the eyebrow is to stop sweat from going into your eyes. That's it. You know, it shouldn't move. Huh? OK, whether you're presenting a YWA or anything. Huh? And the third one is very simple. If you're really not comfortable with eye contact, they call it the golden triangle, right? Whereby you take your eyes and you focus on the person's left eye, you move to the right eye, and then you move down. Now, make sure you only look at the mouth, don't look anywhere else. Huh? So you look at the eyes, eyes, then down, then up, eyes, eyes, down, all right? So you rotate a bit. Strategy number three, strategy number three is what we call power pose, right? If you're a TED fan, you watch this uh, viral video, right? Amy Cuddy is a researcher on power pose. And she found that there are two different types of poses that people naturally do. And you, this, by looking around the room, I can already identify. Huh? So you can see, notify there are two groups. The first one, she call it power pose, right? So power pose is much more open. So you stand like this, right? You stand openly. And low power pose, you can see you are more close up. Okay, you're more close up, you're crossing your legs, right? You're looking down and all. So what is interesting is this. She found that, first of all, influencers tend to stand with power pose mostly. Uh, a lot of uh, powerful politicians and all, they tend to stand more in a more power pose mood. But what is interesting is this. She went a further, another step to research that what can power pose do to your body? And she found that just by standing with a power pose for two minutes, just by standing power pose, for two minutes, right, can change your chemical in your body. Just by standing like this for two minutes, your cortisol level drop, which means your stress drop, and testosterone go up. You're much more confident. So before you go for presentation, before you go for interview, before you want to meet someone important, power pose, two minutes. Huh? Don't take off your clothes or just stand like this. Huh? <laughs> okay. Number four is handshake. Handshake, right? So they found that handshake determines whether a person likes you or not. But every time when we come to handshake, when we talk about handshake, they always say your handshake must be strong, must be firm, right? That really depends. What is the person you're shaking hand is more gentle and soft and you want to give a strong grip? So what I found is, in really interesting research that says that there are actually two main things that you should think about when it comes to handshake, right? The first one is actually be the first to offer the handshake. I want to watch this quick 30 seconds video between Obama and the ex-ex Prime Minister of UK and look at what their handshake with a policeman. No? So here's a clip showing the subtle difference between Gordon Brown and Barack Obama. Here they are arriving at number 10 and uh, look at this lucky policeman gets to shake hands with the President of the United States. Oh, and here comes the Prime Minister of the... Mm. No. <laughs> Next day, front newspaper, Prime Minister rejects its very own. So the first rule of handshake is very simple. You got to be the first to offer the handshake. You got to be the first to offer the handshake. So always remember, you got to be the first to offer the handshake. And rule number two is so much more simple. You have to give a warm handshake. Sweaty is another thing, huh? that one you have to figure it out. Huh? <laughs> right? Sweaty means big no-no already. But warm is very interesting. There's this very interesting research done by Lawrence William in the University of Colorado. And she found that she, he found this. Huh? He found that we have this almost direct connection in our brain between touching and physical temperature and trust in people, right? They brought people in the room, they asked them to hold some hot coffee and then they bring them into another room and ask to view some pictures and gauge them. And they found that people that hold a hot coffee compared with a cold drink had more personal connection with other people. So make sure your hands are warm to the person you want to influence. Not, not before shake do like this and shake, huh? <laughs> you have to figure it out. The last one takes a bit more time. I remember I was in Gold Coast, Australia, and I was walking. And I was walking, it was winter, so I was, had all clothes on. I was walking and holding a map. I was trying to find the best fish and chip to eat. So I saw this friendly Aussie. I approached him, make sure my hands are warm, right? Genuine smile, shake his hand. And I say, hi, can you please show me where's the best fish and chip? Right? He says, sure, we just walk two minutes in front. You can see a, you can see a blue color signboard, James Fish. I say, thanks, mate. So I start walking to James Fish. As I was walking to James Fish, from far, this man caught my attention. Because remember, it was during winter, and he was wearing short pants, slipper, and singlet. So I was like, wow. So I was looking at him. As he approached nearer, I got even more excited because on his singlet says, I love Penang. <laughs> so I go, hi, hi, uncle. He's like, oh, hi. I say, oh, uncle, you're from Penang. He said, yeah, Penang lah. Then I'm like, oh, okay, uncle. Uh, he said, where are you from? I said, I'm from KL. Then he started talking. Right, and he's so excited, he started sharing, I might, he migrate here with his family. So I asked him, uncle, not cola. He said, no, no, this is like icon. <laughs> like icon. 
right? And I say, okay, uncle, I have to go. And say, where are you going? James fish, the best fish and chips. Say, no, no, no. You don't eat James fish. You trust uncle, uh, uncle from Penang. Uh, I bring all my family, all come here. Uh, the red color signboard, that is the best fish and chip. Who would you listen? Local, Aussie or uncle? Uncle. We like people who are like us. In order to make someone to like you, all you have to do is add one word, which is am. I am like you. The more common ground you find with someone, the more they like you. Right? Think about it. You go, to, you go to Bangkok, right? you see someone wearing TEDx, Utah, you surely you get excited. I was there. I was there also. Right? But here you are surrounded by fellow people wearing the T-shirt, you don't even bother. But just by finding common ground with someone, increase your chances of influencing them. So find common ground. So five very quick strategies. Genuine smile. Remember the three characteristics. Eyes smaller, cheekbones higher, lips wider. Eye contact. Remember, never ever stare. Don't play with your eyebrow. Number three. Right, power pose. Stand in a strong power pose. Just two minutes can change how your body feels. Handshake. Make sure your hands are warm. Always be the first to offer. And last one, always, always find common ground with someone you want to influence. So with that, remember. You can't change other perception of you, but you can change how you influence other people's perception. And you can start to influence with your body language. Right? With that, thank you so much.